Hello everyone again. I've had an idea. You can tell me what you think. I heard uh, Keith DeFazio saying from New Level Auto, we only know what bad looks like if we know what good is. So I thought the idea of this video series was cars I can get access to and I could get some data pids off them. So the first car I was going to go for was this, uh, the BMW 2009 5 Series, the E60. And it's got the N47 engine. So what I simply was going to do was drive the car and capture all the pids that you get through the snap-on uh, Varus. So what I can do, I can upload the raw file to, I'll use Amazon S1, and you can get access to that if you want, and you can look at it yourself, and you can look at the pids. So the drive I do, it's, it's got initial climb, you go along the flat, and then you're dropping back down a hill. But uh, this is starting with a cold engine. And you can view it yourself, but as many cars I can get access to, I will show you. I mean, you can you can show other modules as well, but I thought we could start with the engine module at first and see what that looks like. And I thought if everybody starts sharing, and I mean this, everybody uh, <laughs> slags off the Varus, this is a Snap-on Varus, but for capturing a lot of data pids in the one go, it's pretty good actually. And Shopstream Connect, everybody can download that, so if I share the file, you can open that on your PC and look at the data pids exactly the same as me. So I'll take the car I drive. Let me see what pids we got up here. Uh, that, should, that should work. We'll just go for data. And whatever the Varus gives me, uh, I'll just pass on to you. And let, let's see the first one. So you can see the engine RPM is zero and it's in Fahrenheit 44, so it's about seven degrees today or something like that. So we'll start the car and. Uh, I'll show you things. What we've got to do in a bit, but here we're climbing now, and we're, we've started. Obviously, this is a can car, so the the data pits it's it's not as good as if you've only got one or two going, but it's still not too bad. So I'll leave the camera there. So here's a review of the data for the BMW 5 Series. It's the N47. So you can see there, I captured all these data pits, and the best way to view them is on the computer. So, uh, let me see. So the first four is obviously engine speed, battery voltage. Wait, we'll, we'll hide that. Engine speed, battery voltage, coolant temperature, and ambient pressure. Right. So things to notice here was. Uh, let me take that along a wee bit. The car. This was a cold start. You can see that for the temperature that it was only forty-four degrees Fahrenheit. So that's about seven degrees. So I started the car and you can see there that the RPM rises. Now because I was capturing loads of data pids, the refresh rate is not that great, but it gives you it puts you in the part where you should be at. So you can see there that uh, it shows you along there that my minimum voltage, so this was when I was cranking, it dropped down to 90 volts, so I was sitting with the ignition on for a wee while, so that's not too bad. So ideally you, you want to drop no more than nine to nine point five volts, so it's not too bad. And then you can see there that the engine idling, uh, let me see, I'll drag that back. That's me just sitting idling there as soon as the car started. So you can see that there, current is, uh, oh, where's that button about, 900 RPM. So you can see this is this this drive here is roughly seven minutes there. I'm picking my kids up from school and seven minutes back. So it, uh, you can see here along here that the engine's heating up. And it goes to maximum was 185. So uh, what's that? 212 is that about 90 odds? So I think I get to about mm, maybe 80, something like that. But I thought this was quite a fascinating bit. So where I stay, I'm about, oh, I think it's 350 feet above sea level. So you can see at this point, uh, my ambient pressure is 1000 millibars. Now the route I take to the school, I start to climb. So you can see it's starting to drop, it's starting to drop, it's starting to drop. So I don't know what height I'm actually at here. Maybe just another mm, couple of hundred feet up. Maybe not even that, 150. And then I start to drop down the hill. And you can see that, you can track that all the way there. So I thought that was quite interesting. Uh, at the school, their school is actually lower than where we stay. So that works pretty well actually. And then here's the return trip again. So that's me climbing back up again. Then dropping back down and then back to where I stay. So I thought that was good stuff. 
Let me look at the next PIDs. The in air intake temperature and the charge air temperature. Now, uh, obviously the, the cold engine is affecting this as well, but as you see as the engine heats up, it starts to rise, and that one starts to rise either. I'm sure the charge air temperature is what the turbo is taking in, so I thought there would maybe be two different temperatures, but who knows. And then you've got the charge air pressure. Now this is for the turbo. So when you're sitting at idle or off of turbo, you'll be sitting at the same as the ambient pressure. So you can see that there. That's roughly a thousand. So the max we got to pressure wise was the uh, 2696. So that you can see that that's the turbo boosting in there. I wish what would that be in PSI. I need to work that out. I might put it in the titles. But you can see that's what the car has. That's what the car's given, and that's what it's looking for. So it's that, that figure's just a wee bit higher, but there's not much in it actually. So we'll come down to the next four bits. Oops. And there's the charge air pressure controller. So I take it that there is the, the wastegate, or it's actually got a new name now. I can't remember what they don't call it a wastegate, they just call it the uh, <laughs> charge air pressure controller. <laughs> but uh, I worked on one of them before, quite bad on VAGs. Uh, golfs to go these things. Now we come to our air mass meter, so this is our actual and this is our specified, so you can compare one to the other. But uh, I've seen this in a Volkswagen PD recently, so you can see that currently it's 470 kilograms an hour. So quite high figure. So I was trying to work out when the EGR valve opens, that figure should fall, but as far as I see, well, let me see, what does it get down to? Mm. It doesn't fall that much actually, just let me see this one here, 360, it does fall a wee bit, so I would imagine that's fell a little bit because the EGR valve is opening up there, bearing in mind this started as a cold engine, so there we go, fuel temperature, yeah, that's just the temperature in the rail, obviously this is, this is, I meant to say this is a diesel car, so it's a high pressure uh, diesel, HDI, uh, HDI I think they call it, alternator load, so, I thought when you actually gave the car, if you if you give the car aggressive acceleration, the load would drop off. But this seems to, well, maybe actually there. Let me see what the figure there is. I need to compare that. So it does drop to 44%. So, there we go. Here's a big one for diesel cars. Real pressure actual, real pressure specified. So, you see along here the maximum is uh, 24,000 PSI. And uh, let me see, I'll show you what, when I started this car up, it's roughly, as I know, about 300 bar, 5,000 PSI. So there you go, there's 4,000 4, PSI. So that gives you a rough idea. And that, that point there was when I was really, I was uh, giving it hard acceleration, so you're, you're going up to that. Uh, real, the real pressure control valve activation, that must be the, like an inlet, what you call the metering valve. What else do you call it? Can't remember. <laughs> Put it in the subtitles. Having a terrible time tonight. But uh, that's that would be a duty cycle control valve, and they're usually about thirty percent. So let me see what did I do with my cursor thing. Here's it went to. I'll play it and see if I can see it. Oh, there it's there. So there we go. What's that sitting at? Oh well, you go when I start the car. It's at twenty four percent, and let me see when the car's warmed up a bit. Oops. Oh man. There we go. Twenty three twenty three percent. So anyone's I've ever seen on the older uh, BMWs, it was always about thirty percent. And what did we do? We were given a hard acceleration. What are we going up to here? There they go, forty nine percent. So I don't think you can drive them actually any more than that. Let's go down to the next bit. Delivery control valve activa activation. Mm, not sure what that is. Might be something to do with the fuel system again. Then we come down to our go exhaust temperature before cat. And you see it starts cold, same as ambient. And then it rises up when we get up to 617 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I don't know what this is. AGR controller activation. Now is that actually the, is that actually the EGR? Would that be your exhaust? Gas activation, don't know if I could check that uh, later on, I'll, I'll do that, I'll 
check that with what happens with the air mass meter to see if that makes a difference. Then the last PID is the AC switch. Well, obviously in Scotland at this temperature we don't need that. Although they say it's meant to be good to run your AC in the winter to cool your windows, but if it gets too cold it doesn't work anyway. And then the last one was, oh dear, I was still at four. Brake light switch, brake light switch test. So you can see every time I hit the brakes there, and that's when I'm slowing down. So I thought I'd go back, let me see, show, and I'll customise this list, and I'll edit it, and I'll deselect all, and what was I going to look at, it was the, the AGR controller activation, and then I was going to look at the, this one here, so let's see if this shows up, there we go, we'll show it as two, oh, we didn't like that. Oh, four lights that right now. I don't know why that is. So you can see there that must be the EGR valve. And then I'll go back and hide that. So when when the EGR valve goes low, you can see the air mass meter goes high. So I would imagine that. And I was wondering if there's any either way. Now we'll go back and we'll look at. We'll customise this list and see when it's at idle, when is it hard acceleration. Uh, is there anything else we need here? Uh, that, that'll be fine. So, let me see the car. There's the car at idle there. And let's go along to this wee bit here. And we'll zoom in on that wee bit. So you can see there that the EGR valve shut, or I think that's EGR valve, and the air mass meter goes up a wee bit, and the RPM went up a wee bit. So there you go. So I'll I'll leave a copy of this file to you, a, a link in the description. You can download this file yourself, and you can download ShopStream sc uh, Scanner Viewer yourself as well, and you can view it and you can manipulate the data. But I just thought this would be a good idea if anyone's looking for good data. Uh, this would be a place to start and if you think it's a good idea I've got other cars I can get access like a B-Max and an old BMW and I've got some, what else have I got another Ford and we also could do the automatic transmission, ABS uh, whatever you want, anyway hope you enjoy that, right, so of some interest cheers